Hey and welcome, Kimberly Castleberry here with JustAskKim.com and I wanted to take a brief moment to show you how to do what is called whitelisting. How to whitelist the address of somebody that you're receiving email from so it stays out of your spam folder and so you consistently receive it. Makes sense, right? You know, we're all used to subscribing for something and the next thing we know, having to dig it out of spam over and over again and that gets tiresome. Even if you're with a good email client, oftentimes, you know, even marking it as not spam a time or two, if the algorithm is, you know, deciding that it's spam of its own accord, we may still have to go retrieve the stuff. And that gets annoying. So what you can do is do yourself a real favor. And I'm going to use for this example, I'm going to use my Gmail account. Let me pull my browser in here where you can have a better look at it. And here you see my Gmail account. Now, actually, I'm in the priority inbox view, but it really doesn't matter what view you're in here. I'm going to come down. I recently subscribed to Michelle Welsh's opt-in list to her list to get for her Rolodex tab because I wanted to see what she was doing compared to what I was doing. She's a great blogger. You should check her out at newbizblogger.com. And you can see her little picture over here in my, my e-tax. And I want to set this up so that her stuff never goes to spam. Now, truth be told, she's using AWeber, so the odds of that are really rare. AWeber has a really, really great relationship with the email providers, and it's why we consistently recommend them. They've got deliverability that is, you know, top of the industry. But I just want to make sure that I always know where her stuff is and that I'm getting it and I don't have to think, did, did I miss something? I don't have to go dig it out of spam. Now, whitelisting is essentially just setting up a filter. And filters work slightly differently in your different email clients and are set up slightly differently, but it's all the same concept. Okay, so I'm going to show you on Gmail, but perhaps maybe you're with Yahoo. And what you might want to do is bounce out either to Google or to, you know, to YouTube and, and type in how to create a filter in Yahoo Mail or how to create a filter in Hotmail. And just do a quick search and a tutorial will come up. But it's really straightforward in all the email clients. I use three different ones myself. So I do this all the time. But here I am. I'm within the first email that I got that confirmed from her. Okay. The first, the subscription confirmation coming from AWeber, that's actually an AWeber address on that itself. And so that I really can't filter for. But once I have the first email that I get back after I confirm, and I'm going to click show details here, you'll see that it has her email address on it. And even though it says it's mailed by AWeber, it's going to let me sort it by this. So I'm going to come up here to more actions. And more actions would normally be at the end, but I got my browser scrunched up for you. And I'm going to click filter messages like this because what I want to do is I want over time all messages that meet this criteria that, that are like this. And in this case that have her email address on them so that I'm going to keep them out of spam. And I'm going to do this. Now, truth be told, I could get a direct mess, a direct email from her that wasn't off her autoresponder that was, you know, off of this email. And I'm cool with that not going to spam too. Trust me here. Okay. So that's not really a big deal. But if I set it to be a folder, I got to remember that with just her email and with nothing else, you know, selected here, that I could send her personal messages to a folder as well if I wanted to. Select next step. As I've got the email here, I want it. I want to make sure it comes up. Select next step. And then that loads. And I scroll up. And here's the options for the filter. You can choose to skip the inbox, which would archive it. And if I'm going to send it to a folder, I often use skip the inbox so it archives because I don't need it in the inbox there. But I won't set it as marked as red if I send it to a folder like that. So I make sure that my folder gets some numbers that says there's something in the folder I need to go read, right? we got to have some visual cue that there's an email there waiting on us. Makes sense. But the basics of whitelisting, the only thing you have to check is never send a spam. And then you also may want to apply whatever you're doing to existing conversations and click create filter. And that is the essentials of a whitelist. Okay. That will keep it out of spam and protect it from, you know, even what Google thinks it might be spam. Even if Gmail thinks that that message is definitely spam. If you've set this up, you've told Gmail that you always want to receive messages from that email. Okay. Now, 
the variation of this is what I normally like to do, and that's that I tend to do skip the inbox, apply a label, and I'm going to make a label called, in this case, Michelle Welch, new biz blogger. Oh, I hope I spelled her name correctly. Uh, she'll, she'll, she'll have a laugh if I didn't. Okay, but just for demonstration here. Anyway, get to know Michelle. Click OK. We're going to get that new label. We're never going to send it to spam, and we can choose whether we always want to mark it important or never mark it important if we're using Gmail's priority inbox. Okay. Now, because I've created a folder, I almost always definitely want to make sure that I apply it to the previous conversations. And so I click that. It'll select the ones below and click Create Filter. Okay, here I see your filter was created, and I see a list of all my filters. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, and good grief, I have tons of them because I filter everything. I see that it's here. It says, do this, skip inbox, apply this label, never send to spam. And I can click here to edit it later if I need to. And what I'm going to see is if I come back to the inbox, that as I come down, that it's no longer in the inbox. Because remember I told it to skip the inbox. But if I come over on this left-hand side, and this will be wherever your particular mail client has folders. Now, Gmail only calls them filters, but they are folders for most, most of the email clients. And I come down, and I go through my, my list of filters here, and I click on their filter. And now it'll come up, and that's here with the label on it that says it's in this folder or this filter. And as I get new ones that come in that aren't marked as red, they'll appear here with numbers next. It'll light them up instead of highlighting them or hiding them down in that list. It'll light them up. And this shows me that there's new messages in those folders or filters. And so by watching for new messages that way, it keeps them out of my inbox, but I'm sure that I get all of them. I have all of them when I want to sit down and see what a blog is up to. I have all of the resources in one place, and I don't lose stuff to spam. Whitelisting emails is a great thing to do for things that you really want to receive, and it helps cut down on the clutter in your inbox. Definitely a win-win all around. And I hope that this tip helps you out with setting up, you know, anytime that you subscribe to newsletters and, you know, autoresponders that now you're able to have better control of your inbox. All right. I hope you enjoy that tip. Kimberly Castleberry signing out.